trillions could flow into cryptos like Stellar XLM and Zion coins can benefit. Yes, you and I people, we can benefit. But how am I deriving at that? And how am I coming to that conclusion? Well, first, before all of that, please like, subscribe. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and I can keep delivering more and more content like this to you more frequently. It's so important to watch until the end to get your research in there. I've taken my time out to do this research to understand what is going on with TradFi and how cryptos intertwine together. How is this mechanism going to work? What is it and who's involved? Well, as you guessed, this is a follow-on from my previous video about NASDAQ, BlackRock, Coinbase, having an ETF, and a little bit of context to the history of this financial instrument to trade Bitcoin without actually having to have any ownership over it. So that institutes can get in, so that retailers can get in legally without taking that legal risk. Right, so it mitigates against all the risk. Well, I think for that, we need to sort of understand what was this instrument, this XBT instrument back in 2017. It was the first crypto Bitcoin um, trading instruments where you could long and short Bitcoin, right? So let's find out just a little bit more about it. Nathan, over to you. Okay, that's great, Nathan. Yeah, so you're not far off. It was the CME and CBOE futures contract. In 2017, the Chicago Board of Exchange, CBOE, launched the first Bitcoin futures contract, which allowed investors to trade Bitcoin in a regulated and centralized market. The futures contract was called the XBT and was settled in cash. It provided institutional and retail investors with a way to gain exposure to Bitcoin's price movements without needing to own the cryptocurrency itself. The introduction of the Bitcoin futures by CBOE in 2017 December was seen as a significant step forward to the integration of cryptocurrencies into TradFi. The CME Group and CBOE both offered Bitcoin futures contracts known as XBT futures. During the time period you mentioned, here's a brief explanation of how these future contracts worked. Contract specification, contract size, each contract re re represented a specific amount of Bitcoin, typically equivalent of five or one Bitcoin. I believe the CME had five and the CBOE had one. Price quotations. The price was quoted in the US dollars per Bitcoin. Trading hours of contracts typically had designed trading hours allowing traders to buy and sell contracts during a specific season. Cash settlement. Both the CME and CBOE Bitcoin futures contracts were settled in cash, meaning no actual Bitcoin exchange on delivery occurred upon the contract expiration. Uh, settlement price, the final settlement price at contract expiration was determined by the Bitcoin reference rate, BRR or Bitcoin Real Time Index, BRTI, which were calculated using price from various cryptocurrency exchanges, trading and risk mitigation, margin requirements. Traders were required to post a certain amount of margin collateral in to, initial, to initiate um, and maintain positions in the futures contracts, price limits and cir circuit breakers like other future contracts. Bitcoin future futures had price limits to prevent extreme price wings. In specific predefined price levels were breached. The trading halts or limits might be exposed temporarily. Trading venues, the CME Bitcoin futures traded on the CME Globex electronic trading platform, were, which offered accessibility to institutional and retail traders worldwide. The CBOE Bitcoin futures trade traded on the CBOE Futures Exchange CFE, providing another regulated platform or for participants to trade Bitcoin futures contracts. The Bitcoin futures contracts aim to provide market acceptance, including institutional investors with a regulated avenue to speculate on or hedge against Bitcoin's price movements without actually owning the cryptocurrency. It allowed for price discovery, increased liquidity, and potentially 
facilitated and potentially facilitated the integration of Bitcoin into TradFi, traditional financial systems. Nathan, back over to you. Well, that's great, Nathan. Thanks for that. And, you know, we understand what the COBE had done with CME, right? How that instrument, those instruments work together so that you can have this um, trading fund, like a, similar to um, an ETF, right? Futures trading fund. Now, what about now? What's happening now? We understand that BlackRock are getting in. We understand that Coinbase are involved. We understand that NASDAQ are involved. But is there anything out there that's informing us? Well, just so happens there is. Nathan, what's going on with this post? Over to you. Yes, Nathan. This one in from Reuters by Chibuk Orgar. Coinbase surges after CBOE name crypto exchange in Bitcoin ETF application. CBOE, again, not just the NASDAQ, CBOE. And that is the Chicago Board um, Options Exchange, right? In New York, July, yesterday that is, the third Reuters shares of Coinbase coin. The largest US cryptocurrency platform jumped 13% on Monday after exchange operator CBOE said it was working with cryptocurrency company in its effort to launch a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, which obviously is likely to be the XBT again. CBOE on Friday refiled an application with the US security exchange the SEC to launch a Bitcoin exchange traded fund by asset manager Fidelity. In that filing, it named Coinbase as a cryptocurrency platform that would help the exchange policy manipulation in the ETF. So as we were talking in the previous video, it is for the surveillance, the security, to make sure that there's no fraud, there's no, you know, everything is, is, is running as it should be. There's no market manipulation, right? So the CBOE sought to address the sex concerns that it originally filed did not name the crypto trading platform that would help it detect fraud in the underlying Bitcoin markets. Reuters reported citing a person familiar with the matter that at the, the SEC had also raised the same concerns with the NASDAQ over a similar recent filing for a spot ETF from BlackRock. The person said the SEC has rejected dozens of spot ETF applications in recent years, saying that it did not meet the standards designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative prices and protect investors. The ETF industry is trying to find a way to address the concerns. Coinbase shares closed up 11.7% at 79 93 on Monday and have more than doubled this year. So we could see that actually, you know, Coinbase is, is really becoming the chosen one for this surveillance and custody. If they're going to surveil, if they're going to provide the security, they could do the surveillance and they can do the custody for the major, the major financial institutions trusted by the major exchanges of the world, the NASDAQs, the CBOEs. This is real people. Coinbase, mm. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency jumped to more than one year high last month after BlackRock and Fidelity filed to launch, sorry, failed, not filed, not failed, failed, filed to launch the Bitcoin ETFs. Right, not failed, filed. <laughs> we hope it doesn't fail. The filings came weeks after the SEC and the weeks after the SEC sued Coinbase and Binance, alleging violation of its rules in a significant regulatory crackdown on the digital asset sector. The pair denied allegations. Of course, Bitcoin was trading at thirty-one thousand and twenty-nine dollars, up one point three two percent 
while Ethereum, the world's second largest cryptocurrency, rose 1.94% to $1,964. And that in 2019, from, as I said, um, this gentleman here, Tabuki Orgar. And thank you very much. Well, that's great. Thanks again for that, Nathan. And there you have it. It's clear. It's so important that we do our research and that there's a lot of weight, really, on the SEC now to deliver this approval for these ETFs so that we can get the ball rolling for crypto, or at least the US can get the ball rolling for crypto in the States, and the trillions can flow. But really, it's not just about trillions flowing, it's about the betterment of the financial system. It's about making it more secure, more accountable, more ledgerized. It's about being able to apply this technology with not just security, but NFTs, contracts that are stored on a blockchain in a decentralized way to effectively enable people, not just central bodies, to have a say in our financial system, really actually have a say in any case. Research is important, people, and that means looking back in time. I'm Nathan, aka Nathan of Zion. Smash the Zion coin up there. Like and subscribe and check out the next video. It's going to be on Stella, but I need you to check out Banking on Bitcoin Revisited. It's a re-education. Have a great day. Take care now.